Hello friends, welcome back to Cosmopolitan Cornbread. So I have a very clingy little Miss Bean here with me today and I need to start dinner. Um, so she's going to be joining me today. She's been extremely fussy and unconsolable today. You know, sometimes it's hard being too. <laughs> So I'm getting ready to make dinner tonight. This will actually be my dinner Wait. for tonight and tomorrow Wait. night. Yeah, you see that? And um, here, like this. Oh, ooh. Mr. Smith is out of town. And so this is just a, a really simple recipe. Um, it's not very hard to make. It takes a little bit and you pop it in the oven. It, there's a couple steps, super simple. But I'm, I'm calling this my carnivore shepherd's pie. So shepherd's, so of course carnivore is a meat-based, animal-based uh, way of eating. And I, I started doing this again um, almost two weeks ago. Uh, I did it last year for several months and it made a huge difference for me as far as inflammation in my body and everything else and I've been dealing with a lot of that again and it's a great way of doing kind of a reset <laughs> and then gradually adding other things back in um, but that's a whole different conversation for another day um, that said I'm getting ready to get this started um, I've been running errands today and all that stuff and I forgot to take hamburger meat out ground beef before I left the house this morning and so I just ran into the grocery store on the way home and just grabbed two pounds of ground beef that were already thawed. We have a ton of ground beef in our freezer from the cow that we bought or the half cow um, but again I was kind of in a crunch for time today and I wanted to get this dinner made. All right, so I've got a 10 inch skillet uh, that can go into the oven, cast iron. I have a little saucepan. I've got a small bowl that I can beat up some egg whites in. Two eggs, two pounds of ground beef. I have onion, oop, onion powder, garlic powder, which technically this is granulated garlic. I use them the same way. Some Worcestershire sauce, feta cheese, I have my immersion blender with the whisk attachment. I've got a measuring cup and I'll need just a little bit of sea salt, just a hair because feta is already a little bit uh, salty. Oh, and of course some butter. I need five tablespoons of butter for this. Now, if I already had some beef broth open in my fridge, I would use that, but I use this stuff all the time when I don't need a ton of beef broth and I don't want to open up a whole quart or a whole uh, carton or anything like that depending on if it's homemade or store-bought and so this stuff is pretty handy um, it works very well so uh, I always keep some of this in, on hand the beef and the chicken one I do ha they do make a vegetable one too but I tend to lean towards beef and chicken all right so the first thing I did is I added a tablespoon of the butter to my cast iron skillet here. Just getting that melted and I'm gonna to have to set you down for a second here Willow because I need two hands to open this. I'm gonna add both of the pounds of the ground beef to my skillet and I'm going to begin browning these. Start breaking that up. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to add in about a teaspoon of garlic powder or granulated. 
teaspoon of onion powder. No, no, don't put your fingers in there. I'm going to add in just a little bit of sea salt, just a little bit. Now, if you don't like stuff that's salty, you can omit that because there is going to be salt coming from the feta cheese too. So I'm going to take my other four tablespoons of butter and I'm going to toss them in the saucepan over there. Hold on, baby. There we go. It was off center. Okay. So we're just gonna let this begin to cook and begin to brown. Again, my oven is heating up to 350 degrees and now we're gonna shift over to the saucepan. So I've got my four tablespoons or half a stick of butter in my saucepan here. I'm gonna turn on the stove and put it as low as it goes. This, this eye is actually a little bit too big for this saucepan, but that's okay. So I'm gonna take about a half a teaspoon or so of the bouillon um, better than bouillon. I'm just going to kind of whisk that in there a little bit as best I can. This water's not hot and so this doesn't really like to melt very well, but it'll be going into the saucepan so it'll, it'll dissolve in there in no time. Hold on baby girl. All right. So I'm going to put this half a cup of beef broth in with the butter. And then I'm going to get two thirds of a cup more water. And to that, I'm going to add the better than beef, the better than bouillon. And now I'm doing like a whole teaspoon, which is what you would do for a cup. It's going to add lots of flavor to the meat. Are you going to help me cook, baby girl? I don't need any more. All right. I'm just going to kind of whisk that together a little bit. And I'm just going to set this aside because I don't need it quite yet. No, no. All done. Thank you. Here, we'll throw that in there. How's that? All right. So we're going to... Continue to let this beef cook until it is browned, but it doesn't have to be 100% cooked through yet. So if you see a little bit of pink here and there, that's okay, um, because it is going to go into the oven after, after this step. So we're just going to kind of break it up, stir it up as we go. So next, I'm going to separate my eggs. So I'm going to put the whites in my bigger bowl here. This is actually an, an egg beater bowl. And I'm going to stick the yolks in this little dish right here. And as soon as my butter is melted over there in the saucepan, I'll turn the heat off. We are separating eggs, Bean. Come on. There we go. Uh oh. Oh, there's some yolk in that one. Okay, so my butter is just about melted. So I'm going to go ahead and turn that off. I'm going to take my two egg yolks and I'm going to add them into the melted butter and beef broth. And I'm going to whisk real fast while I'm doing that. Mmm. Okay. 
And then to that, I'm going to add about a cup of feta cheese, just crumbled feta, which is going to be most of this container. All right. We're just going to whisk that in, give it a stir, sit still, Bean. Mm. I see. What's Oma doing? All right, and I'm just going to turn the, the element back on real low. Kind of help some of that feta melt a little bit. Now, it isn't going to all melt, and that's okay. There will still be chunks in there. Mm -hmm. And I've got the feta cheese over there melting in the saucepan. We want to give that a stir every couple minutes. Yeah, what is this bean? Mm -hmm. All right, so I think the ground beef is ready. So now I'm going to kind of spread that out, get it even. I'm going to take my Worcestershire sauce and I'm going to add about a tablespoon or so to my beef broth here or bouillon mixture whisk it together and we're just going to pour this all over the top and i'm going to turn the heat all the way down low give this mixture a stir And I can see some little brown specks from that bouillon, uh, better than mm. bouillon stuff. And that's okay, because once we bake this, it'll all kind of go together. Mm -hmm. I've made this many times. Mm -hmm. And next, I am going to take my egg whites here, and I'm going to use my immersion blender. And I'm going to beat these up until they're nice and fluffy. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn this stove off. I'm gonna grab a little spoonula here, spatula, spoon, whatever you wanna use. <laughs> mm. No, no, hot baby. Here, you wanna stir the bowl? All right, I'm just gonna fold this together until it's all combined. Want the air that is in those egg whites to stay in this mixture. Because what's gonna happen is this is creating like a faux mashed potato topping. Get that combined as well as you can. got egg white on your hand. I'm going to take my feta mixture and I'm going to pour this all over the top. And you want to try and get those chunks of feta all over, not just clumped in the center. Now this is gonna go into the oven 30 to 35 minutes or until it's golden brown on top. That's right, very hot.
Alrighty. So, this is done. It just came out of the oven, and you can see how golden and lovely it is on top. So right now, I'm just going to let this sit here and cool for a little bit while I go out and I do evening chores. And then when I come back in, I will spoon some of this up and show you what it looks like and eat dinner because I am starving. <laughs> So that little bitty rooster that you see in the beginning of all of my videos is actually not the rooster that you see running around here. They're the same breed, just not the same roosters. Sadly, the rooster in the beginning of the video isn't around anymore. And most of my subscribers don't know the story because it's from a long time ago when we first moved to our Alabama homestead. We didn't have any roosters and one day this tiny little rooster just showed up and we discovered he came from the neighbor's house but apparently he liked living with us better and I think he hung around for about two months and we tried to get him to be able to go in the coop with our other chickens with our hens and we were just about to start putting him in there and unfortunately an owl got him it was very sad but he would follow me around and he was super sweet complete polar opposite of the one that we have here that looks just like him <laughs> but one day when i was out there working in the front garden he followed me out there walked right in front of the camera and did that perfect little crow. And I had put that at the beginning of the videos. And then one year I decided to do a different intro and I didn't have him in there and there was pretty much a revolt <laughs> because everyone loved the little rooster. And you know, we had named him Wilson after, after the neighbor in the TV show Home Improvement from back in the day and uh, yeah so Wilson's not around anymore but he lives on in my videos and has become pretty much the signature intro of every video I ever do and when we got the one that we currently have who by the way has lost most of his comb and waddles to frostbite We named him Willie because he was supposed to be Wilson Jr. Except Willie is definitely not his namesake because he is not sweet and friendly and follow you around. Oh, he'll follow you around as he tries to attack you. The only reason we still have him is because he's little. If he was a full-size rooster, he would have been gone a long time ago. So currently we have three roosters. We have our head rooster, Foghorn, who we thought we would have lost a couple of times now between injuries and mishaps and everything else, but he is he's a survivor and he's still here. Then we've got a little bitty silky rooster, a white one that runs around here. He's the one that I have deemed Bumble, like the abominable snowman. You can see him over there in the corner. And then, of course, we have Willie, Willie the Jerk. Watch out, Opal. Then get you some clean water.
All right. So we are back in the house and I'm getting ready to serve up my dinner. Okay, so now this recipe would be considered uh, keto friendly. It would be considered carnivore by most people because some people who are doing carnivore do not have any kind of cheese or dairy of any sort. I, my version of carnivore, I never gave that up. I don't have it with every meal. I don't eat it all the time, but I never gave up dairy. I never stopped using seasonings and onion and garlic and things like that. Um, this is just work, what works best for me. I've got to be, I have to be able to enjoy life and enjoy my food. <laughs> and if I don't have things like that, I would get weary of it very, very quickly. All right. Now this is not going to thicken up or anything like that. So you are going to have some broth down here in the bottom of the pan. So I don't want you to think because there's liquid down in there that it didn't turn out or you did something wrong if you make this. Um, and so you can see this looks like shepherd's pie minus the veggies and potatoes and all that stuff. So again, this is a carnivore, ketovore or keto version, however you want to label it. All right, so I got my bowl of food, got my fork, got my water, and now I'm just going to go enjoy dinner. Oh, and sometimes when I do chores, an apron is not enough to keep all the stuff off of me, and I had hay everywhere, so that's the shirt change. So with that, thanks for spending some time with me here today. I'm going to go enjoy my dinner.